A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. And in that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because of this widow keeping bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? And may God speak to us through these verses today. When I do my sermon research, I look at a lot of different sources, some very old, some very contemporary, different traditions and things like that, to hear what people have said about some stories that we you know sometimes become very familiar with. <clears throat> and I came across a commentator whose take on this particular parable I thought was a little bit different, and so much of my sermon today is derived from, from his writings. There's this judge, says Jesus. Now in those days, the role of judges was to maintain the social order, the peace and harmony in the community, pretty much as they do today. And like judges today, they were supposed to judge disputes fairly, impartially. The Jewish law, called the Torah, also specifically stated that judges had a special responsibility for protecting the rights of the poor and the oppressed. And all through the Bible, widows and orphans is a kind of code phrase, symbols for the poor and the oppressed. And then Jesus says, there's this widow. And that widow is a perfect example of who the law was supposed to protect and help. The law was designed for people like her. And what does she want? What does she ask for? Grant me justice against my opponent. She wants justice. She wants what is right. She wants what the law is supposed to do for her. Take care of her. Defend her against those who are hurting her or taking advantage of her. But we are told <clears throat> that this judge is not a good or honest judge. He doesn't fear God or respect people. He doesn't care for the law or for justice. The book of Exodus says, You should not abuse any widow or orphan, and if you do abuse them, when they cry out to me, I will surely heed their cry and my wrath will burn. The book of Deuteronomy says, The Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and widow. And the prophet Amos says, For I know how many are your transgressions, how great are your sins, you who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. But this judge doesn't care about any of that. So he ignores this widow. But she persists. She comes back day after day until finally the judge just kind of throws his hand up. And even though he is heartless and corrupt, he gives her what she wants. And Jesus says, so if even this terrible judge can be made to do what is right, God will give even more justice to you. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? In other words, God will listen to the prayers of the poor and the oppressed and give them justice. So just persist in prayer and trust that God will answer. Now that's a simple, easy explanation, right? Just keep praying for justice and justice will come. 
Of course, as one writer says, if that is the point of this story, then we have a problem. Which is that 2,000 years later, the poor and oppressed are still crying out for help. They're still crying out for justice. And we don't seem much closer to a world of harmony and compassion and fairness than we were when Jesus told this parable. So, that doesn't mean that prayer doesn't matter, even when our prayers are not answered. We should persist in prayer. But maybe not with the intention of changing God's mind about something or getting something that we want, but instead for the changes that such prayers might bring about in us. And if that's the case, then maybe the meaning of the parable changes. For example, what if Jesus' point is not only a call to persistent prayer, but also a reminder of the importance of justice for the poor and the oppressed? That is what the woman in the parable wants. And so maybe that is the real point, rather than the idea that we can get whatever we pray for if we just pray long enough or hard enough. As one person has put it, for those of us who have the power to relieve the distress of the poor and the oppressed but do not do so, the call to pray day after day is a command to let God's priorities of compassion change our priorities. And given what we know about God throughout the Bible, given what we know about Jesus through his words and deeds, what if this parable is really about God's persistence? God who wants us to bring about justice for those who cry out day after day. There's an older movie called Hotel Rwanda. It's the story of the 1994 civil war in that African nation. It resulted in the genocide of a group of its people called the Tutsi. And in the movie, there's a hotel manager named Paul. And he made a promise to protect his Tutsi family. But he ended up with the courage to help save over 1,200 people by hiding them in his hotel. Now, at first, Paul did not believe there was anything he could do about this terrible situation. But his conscience kept nagging at him. He started to see the horror and the brutality, but he did not want to admit the truth. And eventually his conscience won and he took action. But then there's a disturbing moment in the movie. As the slaughter of the Tutsi people increases, reporters from Europe and the United States show up to report what's happening. Now Paul assumes that when the rest of the world sees what's happening there, they'll come help. But one reporter has some doubts, and that surprises Paul. Paul says, how can the world see this and not intervene? But the reporter says that he has seen such things before. More likely, he tells Paul, people will see the footage and say, isn't that horrible? And then go right on eating their dinners. Now, sadly, that is often the truth. We have seen reports of injustices, and we shake our heads, and we say, how terrible. And we go right back to our dinner or whatever else we're doing. So, if this parable is meant to show us something about us or our world, maybe we are supposed to ask ourselves who we are in the parable. Are we the widow crying out for justice? Or are we the judge who doesn't want to be bothered by her cries? Now, of course, in the end, the judge does give in to her. And even if he doesn't do it for the right reason, more out of his own self-interest, even so, he does give the widow what she wants. As someone once said, justice is what all of the abused and the neglected and oppressed in the world want the people who are forgotten and ignored, the people who don't have influential friends or expensive lawyers, the people who can't afford to bribe corrupt judges and politicians. They want justice. And according to the Bible, according to all the prophets, including Jesus, 
That's what God wants for them, what God wants for all of us.